bike in that day. Cars are just incredibly dangerous. It didn't have seat belts, just some goggles on, you know, pretty much swimming goggles. You've got to have a huge heart, huge balls of steel, pretty much. In the 70s, so it was a very dangerous sport. Every year, at least one guy got killed. Sometimes two out of 18 drivers. So you had to make up your mind before, do you want to take the chance? Or don't you? And I was able, like all the others at the time, to do that, to drive right on the edge and try to stay alive. The racetracks had not been changed, actually, I suppose, from World War II. The runoff areas were minimal and they were just grass. There wasn't safety per se. And I was glad to be able to start that movement. And right now we have probably the best example of risk management of any multinational corporation, any industry or any sport. It's a continuing effort to make Formula One as safe as it can be. Lessons are learned from every incident, both on and off the track. When you look at the Canadian Grand Prix when Robert Kubica has a horrible accident, it was a very, in 2007, yes, yeah. it was a very severe accident and it showed how all the different safety elements work together in Formula One. Because it started with a huge frontal impact on a rigid barrier and that showed the performance in the front. Then um, after that the car rolled over and also hit with the rear into another barrier and all the different elements used in Formula 1 to protect the drivers were needed to save his life. So what were some of the key features that helped save Robert Kubica? One very important element is the Hans, the head and neck support system that is put on the shoulders of the driver and the straps are attached to the helmet. So this is limiting the forward movement of the head, which is important for the driver not to hit the steering wheel, and was, which was very important for Robert Kubica. We are seeing two crash tests, one with a belted dummy and one with an unbelted dummy. We will accelerate the sled up to 30 kilometers per hour and then it will be stopped here at the barrier. So that's the importance of seat belts. What's next, do you think, in terms of safety developments? The crash barriers on the tracks can be improved and also more realistic crash test standards will evolve probably over time, especially by using the data from real-life crashes in Formula One.